first day of the week that's coming up. Right? So we're glad you're here this morning, glad you're here to worship with us. And, uh, um, if you are, would like to and are able to, please stand with us as we read our scripture this morning. Um, this is something I think of, a verse that we need to continue to remember more and more um, in, in the days that we see. All we see on the news and all that, that goes on in our life, this is still and always will be absolutely true. So let's read this together. God is our refuge and strength, a helper who is always found in times of trouble. Psalm 46, 1. He's always found. Now sometimes we say, God, where are you? But he's always there. He's always there. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. Um, and so no matter what we see or experience in our life, no matter what we read in the papers or see on the news or on social media, it doesn't matter. This is the truth that God is always with us. There's a great hymn, hymn written quite a few years ago by a guy named Martin Luther, and it says, A mighty fortress is our God. So let's sing this together. Oh 
matter what. You know, I say we often forget that God is God and that he's always, always with us. That God is over all things and God is all powerful, uh, but we forget. And so I'm just glad that God continues to give us new compassions, new mercies, new slaps on the head at times. Hey, John, wake up. Look around and see that I am real. And so I'm very thankful for that. And I'm so thankful that he sent Jesus to us to be our solid rock. So let's sing this hymn together, The Solid Rock. Isaiah, um, again, is something that we need, like more and more every day and every day upon every day. We see what's going on in the world, we see what's going on in our life, and we say, God, we need you. So let's read this together. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41.10. I mean, just look at those words there. That's God talking, you know. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to do that. It's not for you because you're, you know, you're you. you know? He does that for us all because God is great. This is a new song uh, by the, the group we, we sing a lot from, from Australia uh, called City of Light. Very easy to pick up, but just the words that Jesus is strong in. Jesus said that if I thirst, I should I should come. 
Let's go to Lord in prayer as we begin. Father, we thank you so much for this day. Uh, we thank you that, God, you know everything that's going on in this world. You know every nuance of it. God, you hate evil. Um, you hate sin. And God, we have sin. But because of your great love, you did send us Jesus, strong and kind, to go to the cross for us, to do the work for us. That through faith that we can know you, we can be reconciled to you, we can have fellowship with you forever. Lord, as we continue to go in your word this morning, I pray that we would, God, just have open hearts and lives and minds to what you want to tell us. And God, we'd be obedient to you for your glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, so we've been talking about testimony a little bit. I want to just tell a little story, a little parable. Uh, this morning is not my made up things, but just something I have read about two different rich men that wanted to, to make this world a little bit better. They both had this incredible money, and so they each in their own ways they would do things to make the world better. And while it, it kept on getting worse, so they continued to pour their money into these devices and. and training for themselves to really help out. So one of these rich men, his name was Tony Stark. Anybody know who Tony Stark is? <laughs> All right, some of you go on Google, why are they laughing? So Tony Stark was an incredible rich man in the DC comic, no, excuse me, the Marvel comic world, sorry. Um, and so he developed this armor uh, and he, he had this little hero made, he's inside this, not really, it's just a little plastic thing, but he made this armor for himself to, to combat evil all around, because he just kept on pouring money, money into it, he was, he was a very ingenious man, again, this is made up in the Marvel realm. This other rich man, he's from the DC comic realm, his name was Bruce Wayne, also just a, a very wealthy man, very 
bright man, and, and some of you are still going out with Bruce Wayne. Well, he is Batman. <laughs> if you ever walk by my office, these are on my shelf, and they're for a purpose in my office. Because these serve as reminders to me. Now, Tony Stark, both these men came out and started fighting crime like this. And eventually, Tony Stark, they're saying, who is Iron Man? And Tony Stark said, let me tell you who Iron Man, that's me, I'm Iron Man. Because he was, he's kind of an egomaniac, and he wanted everybody to know who he was, what he did, and so everybody knew that Tony Stark was Iron Man. Now, Bruce Wayne, on the other hand, Bruce Wayne was this quiet guy, that's right, he, he liked listening to music, and, uh, but he... He, he built all these things, but he didn't want anybody to know that Batman was, was Bruce Wayne. And so he continued to fight that. He continued to want to do it. Because he wanted, to, he wanted not to get that, that glory in himself, whereas Tony Stark did. And they, they're in two different worlds, and so they really don't ever meet. And I'm going to put these away because there will be a distraction for all. But just want to give you that little story as we begin. Because it's kind of like the pride issue that we deal with in our own life. We all have pride. We all want some glory for things. And, and, and to a point that it's okay. Uh, but sometimes we are very much like Tony Stark and say, Yeah, it's me. It's me. This is me. Look at me. Look at me. You know, um, where that's not the greatest thing. Because we know Ephesians chapter 3, 20 and 21 says, Now to him, God the Father, who is able to do above and beyond all we ask or think according to the power that works in us, the Holy Spirit works in us. To Him, to Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. God has, has done all of this. God is God Almighty. We sang about Him. And so God is the one who is to have all glory. Romans eleven thirty six. For from Him... And through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. What's on there? You know, it's like, so be it. This is the truth. Colossians 3.17. And whatever you do, in word, talking, or deed, or actions, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Again, as believers, we're doing this through for Jesus' name, and then 1 Corinthians 10, 31, so whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. And these are so easy to say, so easy to put on a screen and read and talk about, but very difficult. Because, again, we want to be more like this guy and say, hey, look what I'm doing. And so as we're digging into Paul's testimony, Paul could have easily bragged on who he was. He could have bragged about what he did before Christ. He did share about what his life was like before Christ. He could have bragged about how he was a you know, Hebrew of Hebrews and all that, and he talked about it at times. But that wasn't his brag. Or he could have been really boastful and said, let me tell you what I've done. And I have gone to so many nations. I have traveled so many miles, and this is on foot, and in boats, and all this. And I am that preacher, teacher guy. You know, so if I walk into your church building, oh, look, it's Paul. You know, I'm that guy. He could have bragged so much about himself, about what he's done, and how he has taught, and how he's actually healed people, too. He could be that famous preacher missionary. And so as we look at chapter 1 of Galatians, we see Paul's testimony that it is the testimony of Christ as we went through this. Remember, Jesus that down, or Je Je Jesus came down from heaven. He went to the cross, died on the cross for our sins, was buried. Three days later, he rose up from the grave, and he's gone up to be with his Father. But as in our testimony, the cross has got to be the center of our testimony, of our life. That we had nothing. We had to, to truly humble ourselves and say, God, I have nothing. I am just a sinner. And so we go in belief to the cross, and then we have been reconciled with God. And so now, getting back into Galatians, just doing one verse in Galatians. So if you have your Bible turned there, after the Corinthian books, you find Galatians, then Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. 
It'll be on the screen, but it's always good to look in your own word. Very short verse. This is a verse, and you come and you'll see these. Remember, you'll see these two in my office on the shelf, but you'll also see this verse over my door. And they glorified God because of me. Paul's talking about his testimony. It says, and they glorified God because of me. And so, three parts of this that we're going to hone in on this morning. And they. There are people out there. They. People who do not know Christ. They. People who are not glorifying God. They. And we get around a lot of they's every single day of our life. So today may be Sunday, but it's really they day. Tomorrow may be Monday, but it's they day. Tuesday would be they day. All right, all right. Because we're always around they, other people, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our, in our city, in our state, at our work, at school, where we go grocery shopping. It's full of they everywhere. And we need to understand something that we so easily forget is that they they need Jesus Christ. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 13, he says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide, for the gate is wide and the hmm, I memorized it in a different translation. So for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who go through it. There are many, meaning most. They're on their way to destruction. All the days that we come in contact with. Now they may be, may be really nice. But in their own mind they're serving themselves. In their own mind they might be following something else. But it's very broad. Very broad. There's so many that are going to destruction. Luke 10.2 Jesus says he told them the harvest is abundant. But the workers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of harvest to send out workers into his harvest. And I think I've shared this before. On my phone, every day at 10.02, a little silent alarm goes off to remind me to pray for workers to go out to the harvest. By the way, the very next verse in Luke 10.3, Jesus said, hey, go. For you guys who are praying, go. And so, but he says it's, it's abundant out there. And I think we in our mind, we, we, we get confused with nice. We get confused with moral people. We get confused with, with clean yards. We get confused with, for people who drive well on the interstate, except there's none of those. <laughs> we get confused so often because, because of that. But, but Jesus says, there's so many, most are on this broad road to destruction. And the harvest is abundant. And this is all dealing with they. We have they's in our family. Again, we have they's in our, our neighborhood. We have they's in our communities. We have they's at work. We have they's everywhere we go that need Christ. And so when Paul said, and they, he had been experiencing a lot of they's as he traveled. But it says then in that verse, and they glorified God. Now that's, when we talk about glorifying God, it's, that's a word, it's a, a thought that's like, how does that happen? You know, and it's really, it's, it's kind of hard just to define, but there's some elements to glorifying God. It says they glorified God. Hmm, this is even different. Because some of those days who are now glorifying God are those that Paul had talked to about faith in Christ, about repenting and believing. And those people now glorify God because they became part of the family of God. They, they became God's children through, through faith in what Jesus did on the cross. They glorify God. And that is the first step of how do we glorify God is to trust in Christ. To give our life to Christ, to believe, to follow, to repent from our last, our old lives, to turn to Him and follow Christ. But others have glorified God because, kind of in the context here of Galatians 1:24, they glorified God. They meaning that they had heard about Paul's conversion from being a very religious guy, but 
but again, more like Iron Man, of saying, hey, look at me. They saw Paul's life. They heard about Paul's life, and they were like, God, this is what you've done. They glorified God. They glorified God because they saw examples. And that's part of us when we're thinking about and they. Living the examples of following Christ so that they will glorify God. Matthew 5, 16. Redonda's got this verse on the side of her glasses, by the way. You've got to make sure you have the right glasses. Uh, this is her photography verse in, in her business. That says, and you know, if you've been around church, you've heard this verse. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. And that's what Paul had been doing. I mean, we talked about it, Paul took years, he studied for a while, and then he went and saw the leaders of, of, of faith in Christ, and then he just started living. And people were seeing it in his life, people were hearing it from his mouth. He wasn't a perfect man. He confesses to that at times in the scriptures. But it was all about they, they glorifying God, they seeing in him, they, they hearing it from him. And that's, and that's what this last part is. And they glorified God because of me. God has called us to live for him, for his glory, for they to glorify him too. We are part of God's salvation plan. Every one of us, if you come to faith in Christ, yes, it is God, it is His work, it is His, the Holy Spirit who convicts us, who leads us, and teaches us, but it's because we saw and heard it from somebody else. We are part of that salvation plan. That's why that because of me is very important. And so in my office, I have and they, and then the biggest part is glorify God, and the small part is because of me. Because sometimes I so often want that because of me to be much bigger. Martin Luther, who we sang the song earlier from, he said, God does not need our good works. Let me just stop right there. God does not need our good works. He doesn't. He's God. It's not like he's going, what am I going to do? I hope they're good. So, so, no, God's God. But your neighbor does. They do. The people in the grocery store, in your neighborhood, in your family, in your work. Wherever you go, they need to see good works. And they glorified me because of God. Hmm. <laughs> I call this biblical dyslexia. We, we switch it around. Because this, this is kind of, oh, it's not in the Bible, I guess. That's why I make sure you understand. It's not the Bible. They glorified me because of God. Because we like this. Yes, God, you're using me. Yes, yeah, and yeah, glory to you, but <sighs> look at me. Let me tell you, let me just, you know me, I'm transparent and honest. Almost every time I'm preaching, I'm God, I, I hope I do a good job, you know, for the people. I mean, that's part of it, but uh, my priority should be, God, I want to glorify you to teach and to preach correctly. And I want my life to live this, but I struggle with this. I want to be glorified. I want to be lifted up. Good message, preacher. Yes! That's what I want, you know? I mean, you can say it. It's okay. Honestly say it. You can go out and say, that's dumb, John. You know, where do you feel? I hear that at home a lot. No, I don't. My wife is very encouraging. But, but we struggle with this. Of Tony Stark saying, I am Iron Man. I said, God, yes, I, you're involved. You know, you're involved, God, because you know you helped me and do that. But I, I want you to look to me. Yeah, because we do that in all of our abilities, right? I mean, God has gifted us some with athletics, some with brain, some with all these different things, and we want people to say, "Man, that's, I, I like that." And it's okay as long as it doesn't get to the point of being that is our main focus. Because if that is that, then who is God? It lifts us up above Him. 
writer of Hebrews, I don't have it on the screen, um, in chapter 12, he says, I mean, he's making this comparison, have, have you shed blood like Jesus did? No. So who am I compared to Christ? Nothing. That's why it has to be towards him. Psalm 115, verse 1, not to us, Lord, and I love the repeating, not to us, make it personal, not to me, Lord, not to me, but to your name, give glory, because of your faithful love, your mercy, your grace, because of your truth. And so, when we're living glorify me, we're not acknowledging God. Yes, again, God has gifted us. He has gifted us in many different ways. But if it's because, if it's for me, or because of me, for me getting glory, or because of me, God getting glory. Because they are to see our good works. You are to see his good works in me. Me being obedient to God. Again, I'm going to fail. I have failed often. But also because of us, as a, as a group, they, they need to see our good works. Again, that's why I have this salt shaker prepared to remind myself. Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth. And this is what church is, most churches. We just a bunch of salt in here. Yeah, you all come and see how good we are. Even come on here and see how good God is. But... I know, you're yelling at me. That's the salt coming out. That's what we're going to be doing today, individually, and as a body of Christ. The glory is not to go to me, although I want it at times. The glory is not to go to us, although we want it. New Hope Baptist Church, we are that church. Yes, sir. The glory goes to God. He is the creator of all things. The glory goes to God because he's the one. I think it's some salt in my Something's burning. That's part of my foolishness that gets me in trouble quite often. But we aren't the one who, who loved us to send his only son to die for us. We were the rebels. We were the sinners. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's why the glory is to go to him. And if we need reminders of that, every single day we have a reminder. I love this verse, Psalm 19, verse 1. The whole psalm talks about getting glory to God in different ways. But we just have to go outside. It says, the heavens declare the glory of God. This is why evolution has so messed up so many people. Because evolution says... The heavens declare we just came somehow out here through billions of years. They keep on adding to it because it doesn't work out in their math, so they have to keep on adding trillions. And so it's just, but God created this world to point us back to him. The, the heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens, talking about the sky where the, the birds are flying around, the clouds are floating when the, when the wind comes and the storms come and, and the rains come and the snow come, those declare the glory of God. The stars up there, the expanse proclaims the work of his hands that, that God calls out. He knows every star by name. Trillions upon trillions. Well, that's too much. He can't do that. Oh, yes, he can. He knows each of our names. He knows how many hairs are on our head. He knows when the birds go up and down, when a bird lands or a bird dies or a bird is born. He knows it all because he's almighty God. So far above us, so so much more than us. And so when we forget that, all we have to do is walk outside. We can stay inside so we get electricity. How's that work? That's not magic, you know. But science, all that, all we have around us is because God put wisdom in people's lives. This church should be declaring the glory of God. Individually, as a body. Declaring the glory of God. And they glorify God because of me. And let me tell you, you know, I've read the Bible many times, but it wasn't until just four or five years ago when this just 
penetrated my heart. Because this, this is a verse, again, it's on my, above my door, so I leave my office, I see that. And I try to live it. That they need to glorify God as I am glorifying God. And so I am part of this great purpose, this great calling of people coming to Christ, of people glorifying God. And it's not just me, it's just us. I pray that this is the desire of your life. And if it's not, we just pray. Say, God, help me to have this more of a desire because I don't have it now. And that's, that's just an honest prayer for God. Because I, I want this to be the desire of, of us here in this body. I pray that more and more people will be glorifying God because of me, because of us, because of you. I want to hear, I do hear stories, and I want to hear more stories of just how God is doing that. Because he's an amazing God. I heard a story this morning, actually, from one of our teenagers. I was like, wow, thank you for sharing that with me. So, have you truly glorified God by giving him your life, first of all? Because that's what he calls us to, is to follow him. That was Paul's testimony. He'd done so many things, so many good things. He's like, no, that was all me. And so he had to turn away from his own life and turn to what Jesus did on the cross and place his entire life, his hope, his eternity, through faith in Jesus. I hope you've done that. But as we are... Believers, most of us, are we living? Let me just turn to you. Am I living to glorify God or am I living to glorify John? Again, it's a struggle all the time. But this is where joy is. So back to you, Lord. Are you living to glorify God or are you living to glorify yourself? It's a lifelong process, a lifelong process to do this. Again, that's where the joy is. That's where the peace is. That's what God calls us to. And that's what they need. That's what they need. Let's pray. Father, I thank you again that you love us. A love that is so different than ours. God, because we would have given up on us you have them. So Lord, I pray that we would truly have this desire growing in our life to glorify you more and more. So that our testimony when we die, something that could be inscribed on our tombstone would be that they glorify God because of I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand as we sing this closing song. Glorify. We will worship Him in righteousness. We will.
may be seated, please. It's like, wow, getting out early today. Don't expect that. <laughs> Let's go through some announcements again. The all the announcements, the the notes, all the scriptures. You can find it. You just click on the bulletin part of our website to see. Um, just as a help to see what's coming up too. Prayer requests. There's some yellow sheets back there. You can fill out and put them in the slot. I, I love looking at my box and out there and go, it's yellow slip. Yes. So I love praying, and I know that other people are praying for people. I mean, it's not like you have to, but it's if you'd like to for me to pray also for those people. Um, we're also praying for those who's your one. We're ending the 30-day campaign on Tuesday of uh, in praying. Does it mean you stop praying for these people? Um, but I hope you've been encouraged for those who receive our texts. Uh, getting the scriptures every day is kind of a little prompting. Uh, I'll probably do that as an occasion now to prompt about praying for, for the lost through our texting program. If you're not getting to texts, please let me know. We'll add you to our text. We send out announcements and, and other things. Prayer requests also do that. Upcoming birthdays. Lee's birthday is today. There we go. birthday, so we got last week recognition and this week recognition. Next Sunday, we're not going to recognize your birthday, sorry. <laughs> but happy birthday, Lee. Uh, Diane has a birthday this week. So, <laughs> happy birthday and then Emmy Steven, she's not here this morning, but uh, she is turning a year older, I have no idea. How old is she turning, anybody know? Alright. Grandma's downstairs, so. Uh, Yes. My granddaughter's here. This is my daughter, Hannah. It's just <laughs> Caleb, Caleb left, but she's not feeling well. Uh, I cooked for him last night, so <laughs> that's the truth. So, <laughs> so we'll go. Let's move this. Uh, Caleb, they're, they're leaving, and our granddaughter and their dogs are leaving after lunch today. So just pray for them, especially if you sick. So, then anniversary. You seen this? All right. <laughs> you have an anniversary coming up this week. <laughs> not up there, but our, our, we have four that are going to Bible camp this week. They go tomorrow. They leave tomorrow. Aaron uh, O'Brien is driving them down there, so pray for this sure, travel mercy. Change plan under Alyssa's Oh, change the plan. So Melissa's driving now. All right. Lots of prayer. All right, lots of prayer. <laughs> uh, but it's going to be, you saw the temperatures, so just pray for just, I mean, they're wise down there, but just pray for the children. Pray for everybody. Check on your neighbors. Make sure things are okay during the week um, or during this time. Uh, tomorrow, Mama Bees. 9.45 or whenever you want to get there, right? We'll, we'll welcome you. Uh, just We go down and sit and chat. It's just a great time down there. Uh, they they love us being there as a local business. Uh, but it's a good time down there if we just drink coffee or tea or other things. Uh, men's prayer we have on Wednesday morning. And I think I got a blank slide there for you. Uh, Wednesday morning, so we pray downstairs. And uh, then we go to Denny's afterwards. Wednesday night we have... Our study in Ecclesiastes, we looked at love and hate last week. We're finishing up with peace and war uh, in Ecclesiastes 8. Because God says there's a time for everything. It's very hard to, to wrap our minds around this. But God says there's a time of peace and a time for war. Uh, so we studied that 6.30 to 7.15 on Wednesday nights. All right, next slide. This coming Friday night, it's a... It's a Hard to read slides. Let's tell you what. We're, we're part of a Quad City Area Baptist Association, and there's a revival Saturday night at 6:30 at Northcrest Baptist Church. Uh, the top right, yeah, top right guy there is Kevin Jones. He's from IBSA. Great man of God who loves loves the Lord, who loves the lost. And I'll be preaching. So if you'd like to go, that's this coming Saturday night at 6:30. Uh, Bible study next week at 9:30. Worship at 10:30. We're continuing on, our, we're going to be going to chapter 2 of Galatians, by the way. All right, and I love how God is God. Uh, back when I started my year of, of what I want to preach, I wasn't really planning ahead on summer things, and we've had some changes. So what I preach today is very pertinent. And it wasn't on purpose, it's just how God ordered these things out. But June 28th, again, we are the polling place of Coal Valley. And so, all the we usually have between six and eight hundred people come through this facility downstairs. We haven't been able to the past year and a half or two uh, because of COVID restrictions, but we are handing out cookies 
and uh, have water and drinks for people. And so there's a plan going on. Ladies Ministries are taking care of all that, but we need some people to sign up. So there's a sign up list back there on the left side. Um, so you, you don't have to sign up, you can just show up, but it's helpful. It starts at 6 a.m., you early risers, it goes all the way to 7 p.m. Uh, it says 7.30 on that, because somebody just do a little cleanup is all. But if you can work any of that time, just come and audit to say, hey, have a good day, type of thing. We can't, we don't tell them about Jesus unless they bring it up. So we hope we pray for that. We can't talk about church unless they bring it up. We just share the love of Christ with people. And so if you'd like to sign up for that, there. Then, Coal Valley Days is July 1st and 2nd. They're sign up lists on the right side. Um, we are focusing on the children area. I know there's a list. If you feel called, you want to help volunteer in any other way, you can do that. But we are focusing on the children area, especially with our uh, summer fest coming up. So we need you to sign up. We need to be the salt. And that, that's sacrifice. Okay? I, I understand that. Uh, we, are, we are doing more than we did last year. We're doing Friday night and Saturday. So... I, I, we need help. We need to shine. And they, there's a lot of days coming through, July 1st and 2nd. I'm not going to pressure you, but I want you to, hey, sweetheart, you come up here. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Eleanor. There you go. It's Eleanor. All right, anything else? Yes, we have Summerfest coming up. <laughs> And so we also have some invite little business cards out there from four years old to fifth, fifth right? A lot of strange people out there. <laughs> um, and so, Redonna, anything else about Summerfest? No, I think everybody has their uh, literature now, homo. So I know our teachers are working hard just planning and preparing, and we'll be having some other sessions soon to work on the decorations and just, you know, get things together so thank you for giving us your time to prepare and work and do all that pray now for the kids that god will send us yes because it is it's a mission field july 22nd it's a friday <laughs> night um, 6:30 to 8 is that right um, yep 6 30 to 8 sun, saturday morning 9 30 to 11 and then sunday morning 9 30 to 11 30 so we'll all experience a little bit of summer fest also coming up, it's not up there yet, but July 10th, yes, uh, we have our next members meal and members meeting afterwards, so that's coming up July 10th. Any other announcements? Last one we always do is pray about what God would have you to give, and the box back there, you can do it online. Uh, just to, uh, anything else? Can you wait to buy? All right, well, God bless you all, and... Uh, Think about and they glorify God because of me. Amen. Amen.